Hello Brawlhalla fans, it's Raven, and welcome to the Brawlhalla Breakdown. In this ongoing video series, I'll be focusing on how the competitive meta shifts with every new patch, what new strategies are being developed, how the tier list of legends has shifted, and what new tactics are crucial for rising to the top of 1v1 play. Now this video series is designed for those who are already familiar with 1v1 competitive play, but are interested in getting a detailed look at how recent patch changes are affecting play at the highest levels. If you're new to Brawlhalla, you may want to focus on core mechanics and other basic techniques before following the information given here. I do have some other guides that you've probably already seen. But anyway, with all of that being said, let's begin. The first thing that I want to talk about today is the current tier list. Now, I decided after a, a uh, long period of putting it off to actually make a tier list, and here it is. Um, this is basically the breakdown I feel that all of the characters are at with this patch. I feel that the game is probably at the most balanced state that it's ever been with the recent changes to movement speed and the way that stats now affect damage and... Uh, general movement of characters. Characters who used to be ridiculously underpowered are now well balanced. Characters that were overpowered have been brought down and, and marginalized somewhat and this is the way that I feel the current list of characters are broken down into. Now some of this is um, related directly to personal experience. Other um, data for this was drawn from other players that I've seen playing in the top 50 ranks in addition to the performances that we saw during the most recent Grand Tournament 2. So for those of you who weren't able to watch it, the um, top three players in that tournament played Hattori, Scarlet, and Lucian, followed up by a switch pick between Hattori and Bodvar and a switch pick between Cassidy and Ada. So Roland was present in the tournament, but it seems that people haven't been using him as effectively as I'd originally predicted when I originally made this tier list. So he may be getting readjusted and put back down into A rank. However, the important thing to stress with this and the reason why they're all A's and not the typical S class, A tier, B tier thing is because of the fact that I think that the differences between characters right now are pretty small. There's not a lot of power difference between Bodvar and Roland, or between Thatch and Lord Vrax. Everybody is pretty close. Um, the reason that I have Nash, Thatch, and Queen Nye in the A- tier is because I feel that these three legends do still have some problems. I think that Queen Nye's movement speed and attack speed is really holding her back compared to other legends. Um, Nash is no longer the powerhouse he used to be because the attack speed changes means that his moves don't have the same amount of reach and distance that they used to. And finally, Thatch just has really awkward signature moves and kind of mediocre stats in the departments where it actually matters. So, um, just not quite as powerful as everyone else. But my overall opinion is, is that 1.7.2 is the single most balanced patch that we've had to date, and I've heard this sentiment echoed by a lot of other players in the community, and I think everybody is pretty happy with the direction that the game has gone. Now in the future, I do plan to update the tier list every time that a new patch comes out, um, so look forward to that, and we'll continue to keep an eye on how we feel that everybody is kind of stacking up. All right, so moving on, I wanna talk about some of the strategic shifts in the game that has um, occurred at the highest levels of play. You know, we'll, we're gonna say like rank 100 and above since those are usually the people that I'm playing most of the time. Um, so I can't really speak much for, um, you know, gold and silver and bronze and the rest of it. Um, but in the competitive meta, there's quite a few things that have arisen that are pretty new in my experience. So the first of which is the ground game. Due to the new signature moves that we've had added to the characters starting off in this patch with Cassidy, Ada, Scarlet, and um, Lord Vrax, the ground game now is really important. All of these characters were given tools to deal with really common approaches like dive kicks. There are a lot of anti-air moves now in the signature moves. Um, there's some really great safety moves. There are moves that are great at punishing dodges. And now the ground game has become this essential part of playing at the highest level. And it wasn't really the case before. I mean, it was there, but the emphasis wasn't quite as high. 
The second thing is that heavy moves, using heavy moves to punish things, are it's now a very common and important tactic. In the past, in some of my older videos, you know, I said, you know, don't use heavy moves, they're really predictable, they're really slow, you know, stick to quick attacks. And while that's still true, you want to use heavy moves to punish because now heavy moves are more effective than ever before. They are also faster than they were before due to the recent stat changes, and so now heavy moves are being used to punish things in ways that they just weren't in previous patches. And the top players, such as uh, Scroin and Kreutzberg, have this down phenomenally to where they know exactly when to pull out a heavy move, and it is devastating to play against these guys because of it. Um, as we mentioned with the tier list, the speed changes mean better viability for the whole cast, so you can pretty much play whoever you want and find some success. Additionally, one last thing to note about the stat changes is that weapon attack speed now affects the amount of travel that you get on a move, which means that moves that have momentum to them, such as the forward light when you're on the ground with the sword that kind of roll forward, it means that characters like Atori with really high attack speed are going to move farther than, say, characters like Roland who have lower attack speed, which is also part of the reason why Nash is slightly lower tier now because attack speed is so devastatingly low. And then for finally, one of the last big strategic shifts is that attack selection is incredibly crucial. And by attack selection, what I basically mean is choosing the right move at the right time. The overall damage cap and ability to recover seems to have gone down slightly in the last few patches. I'm not sure if it's directly because of the stat changes or if there were some other things going on in the background, but basically the game can come down to now choosing the wrong attack in the wrong moment means that you lose the match. And it's, it also has to do with just how daggone good everybody is at the, at, <laughs> at the top. Um, there, the difference in skill level has really diminished you know, among the top 40 players and so there are no more easy wins and so picking the right attack for the right time is really important and I've noticed that especially more with uh, the heavy move punishes and using signature moves to punish um, in addition to the way that the ground game is more important choosing the right attack and choosing the best attack for the moment is really important you can't just zone people anymore and expect to have success you can't just air tilt spam constantly like we were seeing in 1.5 you need to be able to, you know, choose the best attack at the right time. So let's move on a little bit to some more tactical things, um, some some more tactical level stuff. One of the things that I've noticed, and this was kind of how the the concept of using heavy moves for punishes does come to the forefront, is that punishing dive kicks is really important, and also limiting the amount of dive kicks you're using is also important. Dive kicks got retooled and are no longer the 100% win move that they used to be. Um, they do get beat out by more moves now. They also seem to have longer recovery time with the recent patch. And so using a dive kick is still a good way to get in, but it's not nearly as useful as it used to be. And it is very punishable. Um, one of the other things I've noticed at high levels of play is that throwing weapons is absolutely crucial. Um, being able to chain weapon throws being able to know when to throw your weapon away and when to keep it has become more and more important. And even with throwing gadgets, you know, these matches now are coming down to did I hit him one extra time? And with that, it becomes even more important to be able to control your throws and to be able to practice knowing, you know, when is the right time to throw diagonally or, you know, at jump height or what have you. Um, the last thing on the strategy shifts is how edge guarding is more important now than ever before. Um, it is m more difficult to recover than it used to be. You know, despite them retooling the acceleration and kind of bringing it back up to normal with the point two patch, the, uh, the difficulty in recovering is still a lot more than it used to be in older patches. And you really have to do some extreme maneuvering to get back up. So edge guarding and actually chasing someone down and using you know air air down heavies and, and ground pounds and all of the tools available to you to keep somebody off and to keep them on the back foot is even more important now because you can really secure kills in a really aggressive way the way that you couldn't before um you know for instance the unarmed uppercut recently got nerfed to where it doesn't quite beat out as much as it used to, and it straight up loses to an unarmed ground pound. So recovering 
in this patch is even harder than it used to be. So if you're able to knock somebody off, make sure you edge guard as well as you can and really push that advantage. One of the next things uh, that we're going to talk about is how to beat the flavor of the month. So the new flavor of the month with this patch, uh, without a doubt, at least at the beginning, I'm not sure if it's slightly shifted a little bit yet, but is Cassidy. Cassidy was completely overhauled with new signature moves and the stat changes really helped her out and launched her from being, you know, pretty average to being one of the best characters in the game. She has a ridiculously useful tool set in her signature moves that have great anti-airs that protect against dive kicks and, and blade dives. She has, you know, dodge punishes. She has good movement and speed on everything. It's just, she's a monster. So <laughs> with all of these Cassidy's showing up, the question is, how do you beat her? Well, the important thing to know about Cassidy is that she has more areas of space that she can control more so than other characters. So you either have to be incredibly fast before you know the Cassidy can react to you and, and lasso you out of your dive kick or you know um, hammer pull you down or use one of her gun moves to, to punish your approach. Um, you either have to be incredibly fast and just rush down. Or the other thing that you have to do is figure out how to abuse her cooldowns. Understand that with Cassidy's, especially at lower levels, they're going to be trying to use those signature moves as effectively as possible, which means that they're very susceptible to item tosses more so than other players right now. Signature moves only occur when someone is grounded. So if somebody is using signature moves constantly, take advantage of that and throw items. If you look at the game that I played against Misfit in the recent Grand Tournament, this was a mistake that I made constantly trying to overrely on my signature moves and because of it, I ate weapon tosses throughout the entire match. So I know that this sounds like repetitive advice, like, oh yes, if you don't know what to do, toss the weapon. But honestly, weapon tossing is one of the most important tactics in Brawlhalla, and it is how you can straight up beat characters by forcing them not to do what they want to do by throwing weapons at their faces. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about how to win in 1v1 ranked in this patch. Um, and actually the first thing to carry on with Cassidy is to improve your abilities on weapon throwing. Weapon throwing is even more important now than it used to be. It's now probably one of the fastest options in many situations for, um, for retaliating against an attack. It's super important, super useful, and it's being utilized at the highest levels of play. There is no reason for you not to be incorporating this. And if you know that this is a weak point, I'd encourage you to practice it. It's something that I'm trying to work on constantly because um, I've been I've been struggling with how to use weapon tosses at the level of play that everyone is at now, but it's something that wins games. And in the games that I incorporate more weapon tossing, I tend to do better. So weapon throwing. The second thing, and it kind of connects to weapon throwing is to learn the unarmed move set. I feel like unarmed is still incredibly important for everyone to know and we saw a lot of unarmed tactics and techniques coming out in the tournament last week. There is no excuse not to learn how to be really good at unarmed combat. Uh, I just recently made a unarmed bread and butter video that covers the most basic combo which is just slide kick and air neutral. If nothing else, learn this one combo it will do wonders for you. Once you have all of those things down, that's when you have to start reading your opponent. And reading your opponent has gotten more and more difficult and prevalent at the highest levels. During the tournament, part of the reason why I lost to Kreutzberg is because I selected Ada three times. And in the third match, he had completely figured me out by then. He knew exactly what he had to do to counter me countering him. <laughs> so after he read me, he was able to figure out what was going on, and I didn't realize it until the match was almost over. So getting into the heads of your opponent is something that's even more important than ever before, and you have to be able to do that by mixing up your play. And at the really high levels, getting into the other guy's head is incredibly important. There are some people that I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with who are ranked 20 positions below me. There are people that are 15 positions below me that never beat me because they just don't. I don't know if it's because I'm in their head 
but that's probably what it is. So reading your opponent and getting in a good mental state becomes very important. And on that note, the last thing that I want to talk about is kind of, in, in this portion of the video, is the 1v1 mindset. And this is something I think that has become more prevalent now that we have a ladder. You know, I know the ladder came out in 1.6. Um, and I know that 1v1 ranks has been a source of frustration and sorrow for many people. Um, I also know that the top 50 players seem to kind of shift positions here and there all throughout the day. Um, and I'm sure people are skyrocketing through ranks in other areas. But the thing about 1v1 mindset is that you need to go in planning to win. Don't give up when you get to the load screen and you see that the guy is ranked 50 ranks above you or that he's in gold and you're in silver or, you know, you're ranked 90 and he's ranked 20. Like, don't give up at the character screen. You have to go in with a game plan and approach it from the perspective that you can win the match. And here's the thing. If you don't win the match, don't get salty. Don't get upset. Don't go on tilt. You have to stay calm and learn from your mistakes. Now clearly this is a lot easier to say than it is to go out and do, and it takes practice, and it takes a lot of conscious effort to be able to control your emotions, but the best thing that you can do when you lose a match is to not get upset and instead to analyze your play. This is something that I know a lot of us struggle with. It's something that I was plagued with for years when I first started doing competitive gaming, and I'll be honest, I still get upset when I lose particular matches. I still do, I get frustrated, more so with myself than anything else. But you have to be able to understand why you lost and then move forward and learn from your mistakes. That's how you get better as a player. So as far as for things and what to look forward to with Brawlhalla, today during the dev stream, the patches previewed the new Minotaur character. Actually, that was last week, excuse me. They previewed the new Minotaur character last week. And this week they previewed the new Nai moves, which actually have a lot of interesting reach and movement to them, which I think is going to help round her out as a character. And I know that more signature moves are coming. As more signature moves show up, the balance of the game is going to change. It's going to continue to be in flux. New flavors of the month are going to arise. Hopefully characters that haven't seen a lot of play lately, like Thatch, will finally get their day in the spotlight and everything will be awesome. I know that the devs have talked about adding a bunch of new social features, including things like clan support that are natively in game and stuff like, um, you know, having more social features where people can have, you know, set rooms and more things like that. Um, I know that they're looking at doing tournament integration through X-Fire and there's just a whole bunch of things in the pipeline that I think are going to be really interesting for the future of the game. So, we have all of that to look forward to. In the meantime, I would like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I know that me rambling on trying to convey information may or may not be successful, so please, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments. If you have critique or suggestions, please also provide them in the comments below because I want to make this as useful and as valuable to everyone as possible and I wanna make sure that I can deliver it in more of a timely fashion each time that we have a patch, which is why it's a little bit low on the you know production values, but I'm hoping that some of this information was incredibly useful and that you'll be able to take it into your 1v1 matches and find more success in ranked. So, thank you very much for watching.